Judgment in the matter of Safa and the Nava against HAD. This appeal concerns a situation in which two parties are each alleged to be liable to a claimant in respect of the same damage, and one of those parties claims that he's entitled to receive contribution from the other in respect of his liability to the claimant. The issue of law which the court has to consider is whether the Civil Liability Contribution Act 1978, which makes provision for such contribution claims, has overriding or mandatory effect so that it applies to all contribution claims brought in England and Wales, or whether it applies only when domestic choice of law rules indicate that the contribution claim has its closest connection with the law of England and Wales. The question is whether Parliament, in enacting the Act, has cut across the normal rules of private international law and laid down special rules for the application of this Act. On the 14th of June 2000, the claimant, Mr. Harry Roberts, was born at a hospital in Viersen, North Rhine-Westphalia, Germany, where his father was stationed with the United Kingdom Armed Forces. The hospital was operated by the third party, Allgemeines Krankenhaus Viersen, AKV. He alleges that in the course of his birth, he suffered an acute hypoxic brain injury as a result of negligence on the part of the attending midwife. The attending midwife was employed by the first defendant, the Soldiers, Sailors and Airmen and Families Association, Forces Help, SAFA. The claimant alleges that SAFA and or the second defendant, the Ministry of Defence, which has agreed to indemnify SAFA, are liable for the acts or omissions of the midwife. The defendants, in turn, brought a claim for contribution against the third party, AKV. The parties agree that the claimant's claim against the defendants is governed by German law, that any liability of the third party to the claimant is also governed by German law, and that applying English choice of law rules, German law would apply to the contribution claim unless the 1978 Act has overriding effect. If the contribution claim is governed by German law, it is time barred. However, the defendants maintain that the 1978 Act has overriding effect with the result that limitation is governed by English law and the contribution claim is not time barred. At first instance, it was held that the 1978 Act has overriding effect and applies irrespective of domestic choice of law rules. The Court of Appeal agreed, dismissing AKV's appeal. AKV now appeals to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has decided unanimously to allow the appeal. The 1978 Act does not provide expressly that it has overriding effect. It does not provide that the 1978 Act applies irrespective of the foreign law which would otherwise apply to the contribution claim. The question is whether such an intention must be implied from the provisions of the statute. Three statutory provisions were identified variously by different members of the Court of Appeal as supporting overriding effect. However, in this court, we came to the conclusion that these provisions are equivocal in the sense that their efficacy is not dependent upon the statute having overriding effect. Nothing in the admissible parliamentary materials or the legislative history supports the view that the legislation was intended to have overriding effect. However, we note that the bill was a law commission bill and statements by the commission in other reports suggest it was not intended to have overriding effect. There exists a line of judicial decisions which supports the view that the statute has overriding effect. However, in a number of these cases, overriding effect was assumed, was not directly in point, and was not argued. Arab Monetary Fund and Hashim No. 9, a first instance decision, on the other hand, does provide direct support for overriding effect, but the reasoning is open to the criticism that it is circular. <clears throat> The weight of academic commentary strongly favors the view that the 1978 Act does not have overriding effect. In coming to the conclusion that the 1978 Act was not intended to have overriding effect, the Supreme Court is influenced in particular by two considerations. First, there will be many situations in which a contribution claim will be governed by English law, notwithstanding the fact that the underlying liabilities to the claimant are governed by a foreign law. 
This will be the case in particular where the parties to the contribution proceedings are in a special relationship which connects them to English law. For example, principal and agent, employer and employee, or bailor and bailee. Secondly, it is difficult to see why Parliament should have intended to confer a statutory right of contribution whenever the party from whom contribution is sought can be brought before a court in this jurisdiction, regardless of the law with which the contribution claim has its closest connection. In the court's view, a failure of foreign law to provide for contribution claims is not a defect requiring remedy by legislation in this jurisdiction. Moreover, and more fundamentally, it would seem contrary to principle for the law of England and Wales to be applied if the contribution claim were most closely connected to a foreign system of law. Accordingly, the appeal is allowed, and the preliminary issue answered as follows. The Civil Liability Contribution Act 1978 does not have overriding or mandatory effect. It does not apply automatically to all proceedings for contribution brought in England and Wales without reference to any choice of law rules. Accordingly, in the present case, German law applies to the defendant's claims for contribution against the third party, and those claims will be time-barred.